Up next, we've got Bellevue Gold. Uh, Bellevue's been one of the great success stories of the Australian gold scene over the last two years. They've established a 2.3 million ounce resource grading just over 10 grams per tonne at Bellevue in WA. Uh, some recent outstanding drilling results indicate that there's probably much more to come. Now, while they're currently flat out drilling, they are doing economic studies uh, and they've established a new portal which is connected up to the existing underground infrastructure. And on that note, I'd suggest it's worthwhile jumping onto their website and there's a LiDAR tour that they take you through the old workings and it's uh, fascinating technology. I thought really good stuff. So uh, if you get a chance, jump on the Bellevue website for that. Um, Bellevue has a market cap of about 1.1 billion. So with that, please welcome Mr. Luke Gleeson, Bellevue's Head of Corporate Development to tell us all about it. And Luke will pause at 11 for Remembrance Day. So thanks, Luke. Thanks, Andy. I, uh, you, you, you might have a job at Bellevue, mate. I think you, you did a pretty good job on the intro. No, thank you. Um, and I'll just set a timer, guys, because obviously we've got uh, Remembrance Day at, at, in 10 minutes' time. Um, uh, a quick thank you, uh, first of all, to the, to the team at Reed Corporate. Um, I first met the team at Reed Corporate uh, 13 years ago in this room, actually. Um, and they're a business that has a fantastic culture. To look at what they've done, uh, what we just have at the conference this year, under adverse circumstances, they've done a fantastic job, I think, uh, to see the conference grow from, from this room to go into Perth as well, and also into the online audience. Uh, the guys have done a fantastic job. So pretty cognizant today that I'll be addressing some people that may not be familiar with the Bellevue story and some people that, that, that might have a, a better understanding. I've noticed some shareholders in the room today, so thanks for the support. Um, it'd be remiss of me to not mention this morning's announcement. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, the announcement was lodged on the platform this morning, illustrated the 20% growth that we've seen in our maiden indicated resource. Uh, we came out with our maiden indicated resource in uh, really sort of four months back. Um, we've been able to achieve a 20% increase in that resource in a very short space of time, and that helps to highlight, I guess, the, the tenor and the prospectivity and the opportunity that we have at Bellevue. Uh, the other thing that I'd, I'd draw your attention to in that presentation would be the discovery of the Marceline load that's north of Deakin. Um, if you looked at that entire Deakin package now, it extends over 2.4 kilometres. Um, I'll run through some of the uh, competitive advantages that we've got at the project. And it, it, it's, it's a very simple story, Bellevue, and I hope I can convey that to the audience today, uh, the simple nature of it, and leave you with really the themes that um, we're looking to achieve at the project. We're looking to exploit our competitive advantages at the project uh, and really deliver on our strategy because there's two things the share market will always pay for uh, in resources, and that's discovery. The market will always pay for discovery. So if you actually look at our dual track pathway uh, on the pathway to production and discovery. Um, we're spending $35 million in expiration over the next uh, 15 to 18 months. Um, the market always rewards expiration success uh, and that pathway to production, pathway to cash flow, when you actually move from developer status into, into producer status, you're sort of seeing stocks at the moment trade anywhere between six to 10 times EBITDA, but uh, not based off a of standard DCF uh, discounted cash flow multiple, oh, sorry, uh, value. So um, I'll try and highlight that today throughout the presentation. Quick cautionary uh, statement. You, know, you can read in your own leisure. Uh, corporate summary, uh, the stock last night closed at $1.32, capitalising the business really at $1.1 billion. Um, cash at bank sitting at $150 million, uh, which allows us to really enact that dual track pathway of expiration and that pathway to production. You can see by the share price graph, uh, you can see there that the market is rewarding, I guess, the strategy that the business is putting in place. Uh, we came up with that strategy earlier this year, that dual track pathway. Um, and we're, we're garnering support. We've got really 61% uh, of our shareholders are institutional shareholders. Uh, Rob Cohen at 1832, um, asset management, um, huge resource investor, uh, owns 11.6% of the shares. On issue, Evie Hambro at BlackRock um, out of London 
owning 8.6% came on board earlier this year too. So the world's largest resource investor coming on board is a, is a huge vote of confidence for the project. And Joe Foster at Vanek uh, managing, obviously, his active money there. And Border Management owns 6.6%. So that's a pretty good um, guide to, I guess, to say that we're aligned uh, for success as with our shareholders. The image on the right there um, sort of highlights, I guess, the underground portal works that commenced in September. Uh, we're now down 400 metres into, into those old workings. This slide uh, probably highlights, I guess, the, the, the competitive advantages that we're looking to exploit at the project. Um, we've been able to find 2.4 million ounces uh, at 10 grams per tonne. Uh, our managing director, Steve Parsons, an exploration geologist, and our whole exploration team led by Sam Brooks have done a fantastic job over the last, really, um, three years since the, since the Maiden uh, Tribune discovery today, funnily enough. Um, been able to define 2.4 million ounces, as I've said, at 10 grams per tonne. Um, and in that as well, we've been able to define a high-grade core of 563,000 ounces at 15.2 grams per tonne. And effectively highlight, and I'll go through the presentation and touch on, I guess, those three independent mining areas as well. It's another note to take out of this morning's release. Um, we've identified three independent mining areas that are running um, material that's effectively half ounce dirt. And there's only one mine in Australia at the moment doing a higher head grade, uh, and that's the Fosterville mine um, in Victoria around by Kirkland Lake. Two nights ago, Kirkland came out with um, their um, quarterly reporting, and you look at the free cash flow generation that that asset's producing, uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, there is a relationship between grade and cost. We're currently working through our economic studies at the moment. Uh, we'll have a baseline study out in, um, in the first quarter of next year, but there, there certainly is an association between grade and cost. So we're pretty excited. We're dealing in a tier one jurisdiction of Western Australia. Um, and in terms of head grade, I'll run you through a slide in a moment that sort of touches on global comps to that. Uh, we're sitting in a 40 million ounce, in, a 40 million ounce endowed camp uh, on the North Maluna belt. Uh, huge opportunity there for us in that Bellevue's basically sat still for the last 20 years. It's a Western Australian Archean load gold deposit. These systems are big, deep mantle tapping structures. Um, and when we get to that in the presentation, you'll see seven of them that sit within a 100 kilometre radius of our project. Um, the only difference being our project hasn't been drilled in the last 20 years. Now, the Bellevue mine, back in the day, there was 800,000 ounces produced at 15 and a half grams per tonne. Uh, off one load. Now, we've gone and found another seven. So between diggers, effectively, and today, we've found three other structures. Obviously, the Amman structure that came into the resource statement today, um, a hanging wall load in Deakin, a foot wall load that sits behind there, um, funded by the Western Australian Government. Um, we've gone three from three with their exploration drilling with the team there um, in the government that, that have been supporting us, which has been great. Um, but a huge opportunity to keep growing. Um, we want to, I guess, probably um, highlight the fact that as we continue to de-risk this project, that will continue to, to drive the, the re-rate and the share price. Um, historical recoveries at the project have averaged um, in the high 90s. We're seeing the exact same thing, 97.3% recovery. 58 to 85% of our gold comes out in gravity gold. If you can get 40% out of a plant these days in gravity, you're doing well. We're getting up to up between 58 and 80, 85%, so fantastic outcome. Low capital intensive development, as I said, um, there's close to 28 kilometres of existing development in the um, Paris portal itself. Uh, you work that out in today's dollars, that equates to close to $200 million of capex. Um, so the way I see that, it's a $200 million head start in capex uh, and effectively a three and a half year uh, head start in development because that, that, uh, that infrastructure footprint sits there for us. And we've got a strong cash balance To look at our post core values, I touched on Reed Corporate. I think the, the team there have got a brilliant culture. Nothing's ever too hard for the guys. And one of the things that we've spent time at Bellevue earlier this year, we generated our post core values. The average age of a Bellevue staff member is 38. Um, the team that will be mining this deposit will be the next generation of miners, and we're very cognizant of it. So um, our post core values are really driven by our staff. They've come ground up. Um, they stand for passion, accountability, community and excellence. Uh, you've got to have the passion to believe. You can't turn up and do your job every day if you don't believe in what you're doing. So you see that belief in the bottom corner of our um, slide deck. Um, it, it's something that life's too short not to. And uh, our, our employees buy into this because they believe in it. 
Um, the benefit that we've got as well um, is a very diverse workforce. Um, the industry typically carries around 70% um, female employment rate. We're running at 34% at Bellevue, so it's, it's brilliant. Um, we're really embracing that culture. Our contractors are as well um, that do the work up on site. Um, so I expect to continue to see us to talk about it, operating at pace and just really having that passion to believe. Um, if you have a look at ESG, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's dear to us at Bellevue. Um, we came out with our standalone ESG report earlier uh, this, uh, this year, actually last week. Um, we've aligned ourselves to the sustainable development goals um, and committed to the TCFD framework uh, reporting. Uh, because there's the opportunity here, we're, we're really reviewing ESG in the sense that on that pathway to production, if you actually look at what, what fr from a footprint standpoint when you're building a mine, Lest we forget. <clears throat> I think it's uh, fitting that we're on the community slide. There is uh, <clears throat> we did speak to the um, obviously the payer respects uh, for the fallen. Uh, to look at uh, the C in community at Bellevue, the, the the work that we're doing up in Leinster in the Leonora district. Um, again, we're doing some fantastic work up there because uh, it's important, um, and they're the reasons why we're doing it. Um, the concept of shared value is certainly something we believe exists in Bellevue and our staff do too. So it's, uh, it's exciting really to um, see us develop along, along that pathway. Uh, you can see the development of the resource in, in the image here. Uh, you're effectively seeing the discovery hole that was um, effectively three years ago today to a rapid growth in those red bars in the resource. Uh, a large part of the focus for us though in the last 12 months has been um, indicated drilling, uh, taking our drilling um, centres down from 80 by 80 metre centres to 40 by 40 to 40 by 20 metre centres um, to increase the confidence in the resource. You've seen that grow in the last four months, as I mentioned earlier, to 1.04 million ounces at 11.4 grams per tonne. The thing I'd highlight there is the consistency of grade that you've seen across the deposit as we've drilled it and as we've pushed more material in, 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 into indicated resources. The focus will shift, however, for us now into, into resource growth again. We've certainly got that baseline uh, material there for that um, phase one study work that we're doing at the moment, uh, and you'll continue to see us explore outside the resource shapes. To, to comp the project, to look at uh, the peer group globally, uh, what we've done here with the Fraser Index is effectively look at um, parts in the world we'd like to operate, uh, and that's based on geopolitical risk, how the government views mining and the like. Um, you'll see we're sitting at the top left of that graph, sitting in a 2-1 jurisdiction um, of WA. Um, geopolitically at the moment, what you're finding is, from a gold standpoint, you're having to go to every parts of the world to go and mine it. 
Um, if you start looking at head grades, it's worth probably discussing on this on this chart that global mine head grades combining open pit and underground ounces really sort of sit at 1.63 grams per tonne. An underground uh, average runs around five and a half percent, five and a half grams per tonne, sorry. So to look at, I guess, where we're sitting at Bellevue, we're double the head grade of a typical underground. And we're growing roughly 70,000 ounces per month. That's the other thing I'd highlight. Um, if you looked at our peers uh, that own deposits in those tier one jurisdictions of Australia, America and, and, and Canada, typically what you're seeing is um, your barracks, your Agni Cal Eagles, your Newmont Minings and the like um, occupying that space. So to be really two hours from site, being based in Perth, um, we're in a brilliant position to, to go mining. I touched earlier at the front of the presentation on the other assets that sit close to us that have been mined for the last 30 years, your Jundi, Jundis of the world, your Walunas, your Bronze Wings, your Darlows, your Thunderboxes, your Agnews, uh, and your Sons of Gualia deposits. They're all four and a half, five, 10 million ounce deposits. Um, if you looked back in time to see where those assets were back in 1997, it's probably a pretty good guide for the opportunity that we've got here at Bellevue uh, to play a lot of catch up. Um, it's interesting just to explain that genesis as well. On, on the right, adjacent to our main tenement package there, it's basically BHP Nickel West Heartland. Um, you've got the, the Leinster and Mount Keith deposits there. Uh, and to the right of us, you've got the Cosmos Nickel Mine, and it might help to explain why no active works occurred at Bellevue for the last 20 years. It's due to the fact that Kerry Harmanis and the team at Jubilee Mining discovered the Cosmos Nickel Mine. Uh, Western areas, uh, Dan Locker and the team are actually bringing that project back into production at the moment. But with $50,000 a tonne nickel at the time, um, Kerry was dewatering that mine. Uh, gold prices at $250 an ounce at the time and, and really using uh, the Bellevue Underground as water storage, which, which sort of made perfect economic sense. So that might help explain, uh, I guess, the opportunity that we have here and why that opportunity exists. Um, but in terms of the jurisdiction, it's fantastic. We've got sealed water, um, access, water, power, road. You couldn't be in a better spot to go mining in WA. Those deposits, as I touched on, your Jundis, your Darlows, Agnew, your Gualias, all sit within 50 to 100 kilometres of where we sit. Uh, we sit in the flexure of the Waluna Agnew belt itself. Um, if you looked at those deposits, again, the deep mantle tapping structures. Typically what stops your mining a Western Australian Arcane gold deposit is your cost profile. Um, and you effectively look at these deposits, you look at your Gualias of the world, um, they're sitting at 1.6 kilometres uh, from surface and still actively being mined, fantastically profitable. Bellevue, as I mentioned, one load, yielded 800,000 ounces at 15 and a half grams and effectively you saw no mining. You haven't seen any active exploration below 650 metres from surface. Um, and what we're finding on the deposit, as I mentioned, out of that one load, we've found another seven. They're growing laterally, they're growing along strike and they're growing along down dip and, and, and obviously um, down plunge as well. So we're in a fantastic uh, opportunity to, to continue to grow that deposit. That dual track pathway into production, uh, as I touched on earlier, the $35 million spend, um, you'll continue to see us obviously drill um, and put more announcements out to market. Um, been some fantastic ones really in the last, what would I say, eight weeks um, with, with those discovery holes. Um, if you looked at that pathway to production as well, one of the benefits that that will provide for us is effectively in two slides time, I'll run through that, um, the, the ability to drill from underground and we will be drilling from underground. Uh, in the fourth quarter of um, this year. So later this quarter, before the, before the end of this year, we will be drilling from underground. It'll create a huge advantage for us. Uh, the mineralisation at Bellevue, there's an association to pyrotite at the deposit. Um, what that means is it allows us to conduct downhole electromagnetic surveys. Now, typically with gold mines, what you'll find is that you'll be drilling for structure. The benefit, benefit that we've got at Bellevue is effectively with downhole electromagnetic work um, that didn't exist 30 years ago and wasn't used on the deposit. It means that effectively it gives us that vector to drill. So we've drilled 300,000 metres of diamond core at the project to date um, and discovered ounces at $21 an ounce. One of the main reasons we can do this and it's the the upshot of that Marceline discovery today is a 550 metre uh, long conductor, EM conductor that we've identified. It is mineralised, it is growing, um, and we will continue, I guess, to, to really drill when we get the chance to un from underground, we'll continue to drill from surface. But the opportunity from underground is huge for us because we'll effectively open up 
the potential to start exploring at depth. If we looked at the stage one pathway to mining, we're spending $20 million in opening up that old Bellevue decline. We're 400 metres, 410 metres as of this morning down that decline. Um, what that will allow us to do is two things, drill from underground and it will create future production haulage. And you can see two of the high grade areas on this slide, the Vargo and Deacon loads, we'll be spending uh, midway through next year, once we're at the bottom of that decline, another $40 million in the fresh development that will start opening up two of those lenses. Again, I mentioned earlier, we've hit the Vargo load, we've hit the Deacon load, and as of this morning, the Armand load, we've got three independent high-grade mining areas at this deposit, which is really exciting. So that really is the pathway along the way, the exploration side's worth talking about. To look at, I guess, the, the opportunity that we have here, to give you a quick case study of what it means to be drilling from underground, well, you can see the image here that we're drilling into the Deacon load um, from those underground drill cutties. The opportunity that we've got to drill that from surface in the Deacon, it had been 800 metre long hole, it'd cost us 160 grand to drill it and it'd take 12 days to do it. The fact that we can do it from underground, it effectively means our collar length isn't 800 metres, it's 300. It doesn't take 12 days to drill it, it takes three. It doesn't cost $160,000, it costs $30,000. So it's five times as cheap and you're doing it in a quarter of the time. So um, that puts us in a brilliant position to continue to explore this deposit at depth you can see also on this image um, the mineralisation that we've hit in the foot wall of Deakin, um, which is really exciting and we'll be exploring um, next year from underground to, to look at potentially um, another lens. We've encountered mineralisation in a steep structure and a flat structure, so um, it's, it's very analogous to what we've discovered from the, the previous drilling at Bellevue. To look at the update to the indicated resource we announced today, that's the areas in blue, that's what's effectively grown at the deposit. The areas in yellow indicate the inferred component of the resource, the 2.4 million ounces, 10 grams sit in the yellow, yellow areas, in, in, inclusive of the blue areas. The blue areas themselves are 1.4 million ounces that are running at 11.4 grams. Um, and it's really exciting, as, as I mentioned, we haven't drilled a hole at Bellevue beneath 650 metres. We will be exploring actively from underground. The image on your right helps to highlight, I guess, three independent mining areas that we've now identified that run over 15 and a half grams per tonne. So um, you can see how close they are sitting to existing infrastructure. The Vargo and Deacon loads sit respectively 200 metres and 400 metres from that underground working. So huge head start with us uh, from a capital point of view. And you can see the Mace line discovery on, on the left of that image on, on the left there. Um, that's that new load that we've, uh, we have identified. Uh, and continue, and, and you'll continue to see obviously exploration results as they come in. But um, the project continues to grow in every direction for us. In terms of exploration targets, um, we're blessed with them. Um, from a near mine perspective, Greenfields, we're doing some Greenfields work uh, before the end of the year on our Yandel tenements up in Kathleen Valley. And you can see the near mine targets, we're blessed with them. So we'll really will be looking to unlock them over the next 15 to 18 months. Um, and I guess in terms of the messaging, um, hopefully I didn't get too complicated with it, but it's a pretty simple story at Bell. We want, to, we want to continue to unlock the competitive advantages at the deposit. It's grade, scale, growth, low capital intensive pathway into production and a strong cash, cash balance to, to deliver it. So Andy, I think I might, might have gone pretty tight on time there. So I'll hand it over to questions. You did, you did get a bit of time taken from me with the uh, Remembrance Day, so I think everyone's okay with that. Now, I do have one question from Perth, um, and you touched on it in terms of they use the water, of the, use the old workings as a sort of disposal place for the water. On, in terms of the dewatering, how far progressed are you yes. uh, on that stuff? Yeah, no, good question. So, um, along with budget, so everything's tracking well. If you looked at the work that GBF Mining are doing with their underground development, uh, the guys are on budget, they're doing a fantastic job up on site. Their watering's tracking um, to budget, um, which, is, which is brilliant. Oh, fabulous. Well, with that, thank you very much, Luke. That's, a, that's an exciting story and it seems to be growing at a rate of knots, so well done. And uh, worth following Luke on Twitter, he uh, <laughs> uh, gives you updates all the time, so it's pretty <laughs> terrific. Uh, thanks, Andy. And if I've missed anything, I'll be over on the booth for any questions. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.